present. We want to be on the phone. We to be on the phone. We want to be on the Mayenza na rembo jajarira Mayenza saro yangu yarira Mamunza chwangi ya jipindura Bakoma na famba igwararimwe Mayenza na rembo jajarira Bakoma na saro yangu yarira Mamunza chwangi ya jipindura Bakoma na famba igwararimwe Mayenza na rembo jajarira Bakoma na saro yangu yarira Mamunza chwangi ya jipindura Bakoma na famba igwararimwe Chatai famba na jasa Chatai famba na mutetwa Chatai famba na machirita Chatai famba tichimira Chatai famba tichipunza Changira itoto la kwararipi Chatai famba na chasara Chatai famba na mutetwa Chatai famba na machirita Chatai famba tichimira Chatai famba tichipunza Changira itoto la kwararipi Wajinza changia jipindura Morgan Richard Changirai was a luminary politician, a doyen of democracy and an icon of love, peace, service and sacrifice. The leader of the MDC, a trade unionist and a prime minister of Zimbabwe at some point. President Changirai cannot be ignored in Zimbabwe's history. <laughs> If I were Morgan Changrai and I was looking at this diverse crowd, I would say to myself, this speaks to my character. This speaks to the great legacy that I have left for the people in the country that I so much loved. I think Morgan Changrai would have been happy. You realize that uh, in his forthcoming book that we were writing together, Service and Sacrifice, if you read chapter 2 of that book, he says in that book, and he's referring to the funeral of Susan Changrai, and he says, and I quote, even if I were to meet my maker, I don't think at my funeral there would be such a huge crowd as the diverse crowd that attended the funeral of Susan Changrai. Close quote. I think that in his assessment of the kind of funeral that was going to be his funeral, he was wrong. Because at his funeral, he actually went on to treble the number of mourners who actually gathered at Susan Changrai. He never thought that he was going to have such a grand funeral. He never thought that he was going to say past the funeral of Susan Changrai. But what we saw in Buhera in February of 2018 was something else. I think we saw a huge crowd. We saw the nature, the global nature of his appeal. I think it was very clear to everyone who was there that we are talking here about a towering brand that touches the hearts and souls of a diverse group of people. It struck me as a very simple person, one who lived as he led and led as he lived. It struck me as a person who knew what needed to be done. He was very clear on what he had gotten wrong in the country. He is very arrogant. Uh, to some degree, he is very intolerant to opposition uh, and to any alternative views. Um, he, he likes loyalty. Uh, he likes to be worshipped. I think that's, that is the reason why a lot of his ministers have turned into psychophants. Uh, people who just sing praise, they don't ever uh, give him critical uh, analysis. Any rational Zimbabwean will realize that uh, Mugabe is, 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 is acting as a lone ranger. Uh, I think he's just sidelined his cabinet. Parliament is, has been dissolved, so uh, he's acting alone. I've been explaining to the president that uh, Zimbabwe is coming out of a, a political conflict and uh, uh, economic uh, collapse or decay uh, and that the new political dispensation we have crafted uh, is an attempt to arrest uh, this decay. If 
you want this inclusive government to deliver hope to the people of Zimbabwe, then you must regard the MDC as an equal partner, not as a junior partner. We are not a junior partner when we have got the mandate of the people. We political parties are not here, but the objective is repo. The political governance must come to an end. We cannot abandon the issue of reforms. Electoral reforms are important for a free, fair, and credible election. It was very easy working with Morgan Changre. We were working with a normal human being. A mortal human being, fine, but a normal human being who would regard you as a normal human being, would take you into consideration your own feelings. So you would actually tell you the very facts, the actual facts. And then you tell me, even if you want to give a spin, it is up to you, you can give whatever spin you want to give. But what, up, what has happened in this particular case is this and this and this and this. You actually give a blow by blow in account. Like a, a, a client who is telling his lawyer what has happened. That's how he, that was my, the nature of my relationship with him. You tell you the exact story and the exact position and this actual feeling. And you say to you, whatever spin you want to give it, I don't care, but this is my actual position. So he was very honest and forthright. He was a man, I don't think there will be any other. I never, I don't think there will ever be any other Morgan Chandra. At Musuwa 27, she knows the regains and don't she do more go. I got that she do more. They are being intimidated. Oh yeah, yeah. The situation has not been uh, normal for us in the MDC. We faced so many obstacles. Uh, as, as I speak, all the rallies have been banned. Uh, we have had to improvise in terms of how we access the people. Um, and and uh, it's a very hostile environment. The incident with the police yesterday, what do you think of that? Well, it's all part of the ongoing uh, harassment. Uh, uh, there was an allegation that we, we addressed in an illegal meeting. And I don't know how you define an illegal meeting in a campaign. I, I assume they were under instructions. But if they were not, then it also means that some of the police officers are compromising their professionalism and behaving in a partisan way, and especially in a disrespectful way in which the leader, the leading candidate, is being treated like a common criminal. Now for me, I identified with him. I, I also grew up in the rural areas and came to town. And uh, finding a person in the mold of Morgan Changrai really made, up, made us at ease in terms of prosecuting the business of this job. He, he was simple, uh, in a strong raw background, so there are so many areas where we could connect, and I miss that about him greatly. The, 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 the peace and nature of engaging in a revolution. I miss that. I miss that. Violence. We condemn violence unreservedly, artillery violence, because it's not just a lot ever. Some of us, we have lost, we have lost loved ones. Some of us, we endured unnecessary violence against us. But pano tiruda uti tau rekuti. Kaji ji ji no yaya kuita ni chokuti. Baramfu dis. Isuwamu we have refused to accept to be captive to the spirit of revenge. We have refused to be captive to the spirit of being captive to permanent eh, hatred. <coughs> to know how it is. What is amazing, when he was still in neck braces and his eyes were bloodshot, they raided half his house and uh, arrested members of staff, including Sabetia Juava, Luke Tamburenuka, myself, Melody was there, and all the people who were there. Um, party secretariat and the party activists who happened to be here. 
But what was most striking for me was when they were raiding Harvest House, they started to assault us. They were pointing guns at us and mocking because he was here. He walked into the office of the Secretary General only to realize that these guys were brutalizing me in particular. And he, it was so touching. He asked them, why are you beating him? He doesn't know anything. If you have questions, ask me. If you have to beat someone, then go on. After all, you have done this already to me. I thought that was um, very touching. It, 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 it spoke to a person who was prepared to, to, to accept the suffering on our behalf. And at that moment, I felt so encouraged. This was the president of the party wanting to be beaten on my behalf and uh, it, it, it said a lot about it. The last discussion that we had, they were saying that, you know what, look, because we wanted to make service and sacrifice, we thought it was going to be a campaign to go ahead with the 2018 election. But in my last discussion with him, he said, you know what, I think we must change the trust of the people. It must be a valediction. It must be some kind of fear. And when he said that to me, I thought he was feeling it within me that he was not going to come back. And I tweeted it. I urge him on and say, no, President, you'll be back and say, no, 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 we have to change the trust of that. Our initial trust was to make it about service and sacrifice, about the huge contribution that we made in the inclusive government. But he said, no, let's change it into a validation. Let's change it into a fair of peace to the people of South Africa. And that is exactly what we have done. So when he was in South Africa, he actually felt, he actually knew within him, he was feeling it within him that he was not going to come back alive. I, I served Morgan Changra in Wyatt until his death. And I was truthful to him and I was truthful to his makers. Why, 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 why,
Zimbabweans <laughs> lost a hero. He didn't need to be declared by anyone. But Morgan Shangrai will always remain the undisputed hero of our time. At the end of the day, it is people power that shall define.